Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'd like to give you all a complete tour and test drive of my brand new car, this 2020 Jeep Cherokee Limited. This is the third Cherokee in my family after my 2016 Altitude and 2018 Limited. It's essentially the same car as my 2018, only it lacks a few features the old one already had. To sum up how I got this car, after the pandemic hit, I was driving around a lot to kill the boredom. My 2018 Limited was on a lease, and I was putting so many miles on it to the point where it would have gone over by the time its lease was up. Starting around Labor Day, we began to look at brand new Cherokees, and we wanted a 2020 as they were still in stock, it would be cheaper than the incoming 2021s. This car is also a lease, and the deals on the Limiteds were better than the deals on other trims, such as the Altitudes. We had to act fast on a deal as the 2020s were selling out everywhere very quickly. After a few days of searching, we settled on this 2020 Limited in Sting Gray. Having the car for a few months at the time of making this video, I'm loving it and can't wait to show you everything. To see all the different sections of the tour, check out the timestamps in the description box below. Here's the window sticker for this Cherokee. You can pause the video and take a look at it if you'd like. This car comes with the cold weather group, standard on the limited models, which gives you such things as heated front seats, heated side mirrors, and a heated windshield. Not included is the fully powered panoramic moonroof, and although it does have the 8.4 inch Uconnect 4C display, it lacks the navigation version. It also doesn't include the advanced safety group, luxury group, and technology group. Here we have the key for the Cherokee. It's essentially the same key that I've had for both my 2016 and 2018. The key design essentially remained unchanged even for the facelifted models. The top two buttons unlock and lock. Press this button twice to activate the trunk. Press it twice again to close. And press this button twice to activate the remote start. Press it twice again to turn off. And of course, your panic button is down here. The color of this Cherokee is known as Sting Gray Metallic. And it's also worth noting that this color is an option. It's about an extra $250. Wheels on it are an 18 inch brushed aluminum running on 225-60R Continental Touring Tires. This car also features bright side roof rails. Down here on the bumper, you can see that the Cherokee has this chrome strip and a dual exhaust system, also chrome tipped. I really like this. They didn't include this on the last model before the facelift. I think it really gives the car a nice aesthetic look. Here's the fuel door. Just tap it to open it. And your capless fuel fill is found right inside there. Another thing to note is that this Limited also features these really nice brushed aluminum door sills also containing the Jeep logo for both the driver and passenger sides. This car also features a smart key access system. Just keep the key on you in the pocket, put your hand behind the door handle, and the car will unlock. Press this little black button right here to lock. I've only had this car for a few weeks and I've been driving it so much that I've already put 623 miles on it from the original five miles it had on it when we first got it.
To start, make sure your foot is on the brake and press the engine start stop button. Over here is your hood release. Now let's go check out the engine. Here we have the engine for the Cherokee. It's a 3.2 liter V6 with variable valve timing, producing 271 horsepower and 239 pound-feet of torque. Here we have a three-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel. This lever right here controls your tilting and telescoping features on the steering wheel. Here's your 7-inch TFT display. That's standard on all limited Cherokees. These buttons on the steering wheel right here control the menus on the display. You have your speedometer, where you can switch between miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Your vehicle info, which features your tire pressure, coolant temperature, transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil life, and battery voltage, your fuel economy, your trip information for both trip A and trip B, your auto start stop which is controlled by this button underneath the Uconnect system, Your audio, which shows the audio you're currently listening to. Any stored messages you have. And here's your screen setup. With screen setup, you can go ahead and put all this various information on your display in a certain part of it. For example, this is for the center right here. You can choose your outside temperature, compass, nothing, a speedometer, what uh, menu title you're on, the audio you're listening to, and your trip distance. Your cruise control settings are found on the right side of the steering wheel. You can turn it on and off, set the speed, cancel, and reset. Down here are your controls for your Bluetooth telephone, as well as your voice command button. Here's a list of some things that you could say for the voice commands. Tune to satellite channel 45. Tuning to satellite 45. Wiper controls are right here. And go ahead and adjust the speed of your wipers for the front wiper and the rear wiper. Like with all Chrysler products, the controls on the back of the steering wheel remain unchanged. On the left side, the up and down buttons switch stations for FM and AM and changes the channel for Sirius XM. The center button flips through your different presets. On the right side, the up and down buttons adjust your volume while the center button switches between FM, AM, and Sirius XM. Over here you can find the controls for your headlights as well as your fog lights, 
your dimmer switches for your gauges, and a trunk release button. Now I'm going to turn on the headlights, fog lights, as well as the hazards. For 2019 and up models, the Cherokee now comes with full LED headlights, turn signal lights, and fog lights. No more halogens like in the pre-face lifted model. Another thing to note is that the headlight and the daytime running lights are now one continuous light. On the older models, the daytime running lights were seen right there and the headlights were right around here. Here's the back of the Cherokee with LED taillights and turn signals back here. The headlights and taillights look really cool on the facelifted model, especially at night. They almost have this kind of angry look to them and I think it definitely looks better than the older model. You can also see the adaptive headlights go off whenever I turn the wheel or whenever I'm using my turn signal. Here's a comparison between the normal headlights and the brights at night. You can see that the standard LEDs light up the road pretty nicely, so I haven't noticed a huge change while using the actual brights. Side view mirrors can be found right here with integrated turn signals. And also, blind spot detection, which I will get into later. Another thing to note about the side view mirrors is that they provide these illuminating lights to help you see at night. Moving to the windshield, you will see that there is a little defrosting icon right there to show that this car does come with a cold weather package and has a heated windshield. This Cherokee is a 9-speed automatic transmission with Tiptronic shifting. and also comes with an integrated backup camera with guidance lines. This is a short demo of the parking sensors. As you can see here within the backup camera, the beeping gets quicker as you get closer to an obstacle. You can also see it will also appear on your center display next to your gauges. Your parking brake can be found right here, all electronic. Below that are your cup holders and another little storage container for maybe your pens or pencils or business cards. Above your shifter is your Active Drive 1 system that comes standard on all 4x4 Cherokees. You have four different modes to choose from and you can choose them by twisting this dial right here. The different modes should come up on the screen. You have Auto, Snow, Sport, and Sand slash Mud. And you can switch back to Auto. One thing I love about the Cherokee is the amount of storage options you have in the cabin. You have this compartment here, right underneath the steering wheel, a compartment on the dashboard, a little seat pocket right here, and also a two-tiered center console. Jeep really did not skimp out on all the storage options you have. Inside the center console, you also have a USB port and a 12 volt power outlet and also little cutouts right here to place your coins. You have another USB port right here as well as an auxiliary jack and another 12 volt power outlet. There's also a little storage compartment behind it which is a good place to put your phone if you need somewhere to put it. Sunglasses holder right up here as well as your visors and mirrors with integrated lights.
Your map lights can be found right here. Up here are the microphones for your Bluetooth system. And your garage home link system is found right on the visor. Your auto dimming rear view mirror is right here. This button turns on and off the auto dimming. Right here are your mirror controls. You can adjust the left mirror and the right mirror. And you'll notice that little heating icon on the mirror as this car does come with the cold weather group. So the mirrors are automatically heated. Window controls are right here. Both front windows are fully powered. Rear windows, however, are not. You also have your child lock right here that locks the rear windows from going down. And also your unlock and locking controls for the car. Memory seating is found right here. You have two presets. And this is only available for the driver's seat. You also have electronic seat controls for both the driver and passenger seat. As well as electronic lumbar support. This car comes equipped with the Alpine Premium Audio System featuring 10 speakers. There are three speakers on the dashboard, one speaker on each door, and two smaller speakers with a subwoofer in the trunk. My previous two Cherokees came with the standard 8 speaker audio system, but I honestly can't tell a difference between that one and the Alpine system. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a quick sound test of the speakers because I don't want to get any copyright flags. So this is what the sound system sounds like. We about to get it on. Seek of them trolls. I love you, man. It's just you and me. You know what I be doing. I'm about to go pro. I love you, man. You can see the bass shaking the camera. It's really good. You have your standard carpeted floor mats, but all weather floor mats are also available for an extra price. As always on the steering wheel, you have your little Easter eggs that Jeep likes to throw at you to show their heritage. This since 1941 Easter egg that's always found at the bottom of the steering wheel has been on all three of my Cherokees. Looking very closely, on the bottom left corner of the windshield, you can see a silhouette of a Willys Jeep. This is the exact same Easter egg that was in my 2018 Cherokee. On my 2016, the Willys Jeep was in the center climbing some rocks. Another Easter egg can be found underneath the hood. You can see a Jeep logo with the seven slotted grill right there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Uconnect system. This is the Uconnect 4C display. It's the 8.4 inch screen and it lacks navigation. Here's the startup screen. You'll see you'll be able to adjust your driver, driver's seat heating and steering wheel heating as well as the passenger seat heating right from that screen. It's essentially the same display as my other Cherokee's Uconnect systems, only the fonts have changed and the shapes down here are all hexagonal and I think it looks a lot, a lot nicer. I think it looks very sleek. We'll start off with radio. You have 12 different presets for AM, FM, and Sirius XM. This favorite button right here, you can press that and if a song you favorited or an artist you favorited comes up on Sirius XM, it'll notify you up here. This is unchanged from my previous Cherokees. Again, you have 12 presets. You're able to save a preset by just holding down on one of these buttons up here. And there we go. Browsing allows you to go through all the different channels you have available. And you can also browse by genre too.
You can adjust your preset list under presets. Favorites is where you can see all the songs and artists you've favorited, as well as look at your alert settings for those songs and artists. Game Zone allows you to select any team you want from basketball, football, or any college teams. We'll go into NBA, for example, and choose the Brooklyn Nets. And the car will also alert you whenever there's a game on Sirius XM that that team is playing. And here are all the different alert settings for that. Traffic and weather allows you to choose a specific SiriusXM traffic and weather station that applies to your area. You can choose uh, New York, Philadelphia, LA, Detroit. And featured are featured channels on SiriusXM that they're showing like holiday music. It's around Christmas time right now, so... It would make sense that these are the favorited songs. Replay allows you to rewind, pause, and fast forward any music you're currently listening to on Sirius XM. So I can rewind, I can pause it, I can fast forward it, and I can just go back to live. These buttons down here allow you to change channels. You can tune to any different Sirius XM channel you want. Traffic and weather takes you directly to the, your favorited traffic and weather station. And you can find your audio st settings over here under audio. You can adjust your balance, fade, equalizer, uh, speed adjusted volume where if you're... If you're, depending on how fast you're driving, it'll adjust the volume of the music so you can hear it better. Surround sound. Aug auxiliary volume offset. And autoplay. So your USB devices will automatically play media when it is turned on. So that's normally when you turn the car on. AM and FM essentially have the same buttons you find on Sirius XM, only you can't rewind and fast forward. Now let's go ahead and take a look at media. You have three USB ports you could use, plus Bluetooth and an auxiliary jack. Currently my phone would be hooked up, but since I'm using it to record this right now, it's not, so there's no device connected. Info and tracks over here, that it's, if you're listening to a song, it'll just give you the info. And tracks, same with tracks. It'll give you all the different songs off the album you're listening to. And again, you have your audio controls that can be ac accessed there as well. Moving over to climate, you have dual zone climate control. All your different modes are right here. You can adjust the temperature using these buttons right here. And you can also slide it up and down. You can turn your seat heaters on, as well as your heated steering wheel for both your driver, driver's seat and passenger seat. Fan speed can be adjusted right here. You can sync it up with that button. To go ahead and turn it off. Here are your different Uconnect apps. Again, this car does not come with navigation, but you do have Apple CarPlay available, so you can just use the navigation on that. But usually you would find navigation around here. Most of these buttons are very redundant, and you can find them at the bottom. Uh, the ones I want to go over right now are Compass. Just gives you a simple compass. 
driver heat, passenger heat, audio settings, all these you can find at the bottom and you can access all these features through different menus such as the radio and media buttons. Also within the app screen, you're able to take an app and drag it to the home bar. Backup camera, use that right there. Controls, again, you can see driver and passenger heated seats as well as the heated steering wheel. Backup camera, again, can be accessed. And you can access your settings menu through controls as well, which I'll get to. Go into your phone. Um, my iPhone is connected. And you can go through your phone book and see all your different contacts. You're able to favorite your contacts up here. Um, you can you can redial, end a call, put on do not disturb mode. All your recent calls can be found right here. Dial a number. And you can go into your settings right here for your phone and Bluetooth and see your paired phones and paired audio sources. You can add a device. Pairing a phone and pairing an audio source is, are two different things. If you pair your phone, your contacts and all that will be imported, but for the audio sources, it's just used for Bluetooth. Also on the phone settings, you're able to mute, transfer, and join calls. Going to settings, you can change your language, your display, auto or manual. That adjusts your display brightness with your headlights on and off. Your touchscreen beep. There you can hear the beep. Your units of display, you can go between miles per hour and kilometers. Your voice settings, you can have your response la length be either brief or detailed. I have it set to detailed. And you can also have the command list showing, which is when I tried the, the voice control earlier, it showed a list of commands you could say. This is the command list right here. Your clock... You can sync it with the GPS time, although I'm not sure why that option is there because this car does not come equipped with the GPS. And um, you could set your time, time format. You could show the time in the status bar. Change it from 12 hours to 24 hours. Your safety and driving assistance. Uh, your park sense, those are your parking sensors. And you can adjust the volume of them right here. I have it set to medium. Uh, your rear park sense braking assist. Tilt side mirrors in reverse. So the side mirrors will tilt down whenever you shift the car in reverse. Your blind spot alert when you're switching lanes. You could just have it light up or you can have it light up with the addition of a chime as well. Here are your backup camera guidelines. You can have it set to either active or fixed. Active gives you guidelines when you turn the steering wheel while the backup camera is on. Fixed does not. Hill start assist and tire fill assist as well. Hill start assist being the car won't roll back if you're stopped at a red light or a stop sign on a hill. Tire fill assist will notify you if there's low pressure in a tire. Going to brakes, you have auto park brake. That's for your emergency brake. So whenever you put the car in park, it'll automatically turn on the emergency brake. And brake service. Your settings for your lights are found right here.
Headlight off delay is when you turn the car off. That's how long it'll take before the headlights shut off as well. You have a timer for your headlight illumination on approach. And you have some settings here. Having the headlights on with wipers, your daytime running lights, and flashlights when locking the car. Doors and lock settings right here. You have auto unlock on exit. Flashlights with lock, which again can be found in the light settings. Sound horn with lock. When you're locking the car, the horn will sound off. Sound horn with remote start. You can turn that on or off. Remote door unlock. So when you're using your key, you can either unlock just the driver door or all the doors. Passive entry. That's your smart key access system. When you have the key in your pocket, you could just go up to the door and just unlock it. You can have your personal settings linked to your key fob, and you also have a power lift gate alert. Auto on comfort. This is a good setting, especially for the winter when it's really cold. When you turn the car on, it'll automatically turn on your heated seat and heated steering wheel. You can also have that off or only when you remote start the car. Your engine off options are found right here. Easy exit seats, engine off power delay. So when you turn the car off, that's how long it'll take before the power shuts off as well, as well as your headlight off dis delay. Audio settings, again, can be found in the settings menu, as well as your phone, Bluetooth settings. You can turn on do not disturb, have an auto reply and an auto reply message, and you can customize that. And this will go through your phone and you can type out an, a, a message that you can send anyone if you're driving and you're not able to answer a text. I'm not sure if my older Cherokees had that feature, so that's pretty cool. Again, you can go back to your paired phone and audio devices. You have your phone pop-up displayed in your instrument cluster. So again, if someone's calling you, it'll just come up on the display right over here. Your Sirius XM setup. You can choose any channels to just skip over. And you can look at your subscription information. You're able to call them as well. You can restore all your settings to your default, and you can also clear your personal data. You can find your redundant buttons right here for the climate controls, volume, and tuning. The only different buttons down here is you have a mute button, which mutes the music, traction control off, and auto start stop off as well as a screen off button. And you have your parking sensors off button right here next to your hazards. And I wanna do a quick demonstration of Apple CarPlay. All you have to do is just plug your phone in to one of the USB cables, and you'll see your phone icon now changes to CarPlay. CarPlay is very simple. It runs off apps on your phone. You see you have your phone, podcasts, maps, news, messages, audiobooks. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go in depth with all of these. You can see what music you're listening to, any maps, directions right here messages, what song you're playing, calendar. And here are most of your CarPlay apps. I have Google Maps, iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, Spotify, and Waze. It's very straightforward and you can also use Siri to make text messages too. Now in the back seat, 
You have map pockets for both the driver and passenger. Climate vents down here. Right here is an armrest with cup holders. Grab handles, the integrated coat hooks. You have your rear dome lights. Just push to turn them on. Right here, you have US two USB and USB-C ports. And you also have a complete 150 watt power outlet. Underneath the trunk, this button right here allows you to lock the car. Press this button right here to open the trunk. With the seats folded up, you get about 25.8 cubic feet of cargo space, which is the same as the pre-facelifted model. You can fold the seats down by pulling on this little tab right here. With the seats folded down, the cargo space extends to 54.7 cubic feet. Over here are some hooks, more hooks over here, and you get another 12 volt power outlet right here. There are also these little rungs right here, which I believe is used for the cargo cover, but this car does not come with that. There's some extra storage pockets right here. And removing this cover will reveal your spare tire as well as your tire changing kit. And this button right here closes the trunk. Glove compartment can be found right here. It has pretty good storage space. It's also damped. And inside are some manuals. This is the manual for the Uconnect system. Your owner's manual. Along with a Sirius XM pamphlet and a little case to carry the owner's manual in. Now it's time to go ahead and take the Cherokee on a test drive. Right, test driving the Cherokee. I want to be doing some driving on surface streets as well as the highways. And um, while I drive, I'm going to be talking about the car and my experiences with it. So to start off, we got the car on September 7th. Today's October 9th, and the reason why I'm filming the test drive portion of this video later is because I don't really do these tours in one take. I kind of spread them out over days when I have a free chance to film. But the car actually just hit a thousand miles today. Um, very appropriate because this is a, a, a 36 month lease. 12,000 miles and so right about right now I'm pretty much on schedule with that which is good overall I really can't complain I like driving the car it has the same engine as 
both my 2016 Altitude and my 2018 Limited, which is the 3.2 liter V6 variable valve timing, 24 valve engine. And honestly, I was told that the engine is more refined for uh, the facelifted models, but honestly, it, it, it really just feels like my 2018. I mean, I'm sure it is refined in some ways, but it feels just like driving my previous Cherokee. But I have no complaints for it. You know, it's 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 quick, it, it, it accelerates nicely. It's good going up hills, which is something I really needed because I went to school in West Virginia and there were a lot of hills going up there. Really nice, easy turning right there. Car handles very smooth, I think. Definitely could feel the weight shift when cornering. But then again, this is a Jeep. It's a pretty heavy car. So I can understand if it doesn't take corners that well. But then again, you're really you're really getting a Jeep for the off-road performance, not to see how well it corners. The only thing I'm missing with this car is the stock navigation system, which I've loved. Instead, you could use Apple CarPlay, which is really good, but you know, I, I always thought the stock navigation system was great. I thought the voice was really nice. I thought the map was good. Especially since it's been updated for the facelifted models with the new Uconnect 4 system. Uh, whereas my 2018 and to an extent my 2016 both had the old Uconnect uh, model. I'm just missing out on the navigation system as well as the sunroof, which again, my personal preference, I think the sunroof is really nice. It lets, it's, it's all panoramic, so it lets a lot of light into the car, which I love. But the thing I don't like about Jeeps is that you essentially have one option for the sunroof and that's the panoramic, which is great, but it's essentially you get the panoramic or you get nothing at all, which I don't understand why they can't include a normal sunroof like a Honda CRV has or, you know, cause some, some cars still have like the normal sunroof, not panoramic. It's just annoying that Jeep doesn't give you that option of just getting a normal sunroof up here. So that's that's one thing I'm I'm really missing out on. Overall, I I've I've really enjoyed the car. I've I've always thought, you know, I've always loved Jeeps. I've always thought they're really good at what they do. They just handle bad weather pretty nicely. And it's like a dedicated SUV if you want true 4x4 capability. You're not going to get like true 4x4 in a Honda CRV or a Subaru Forester. I mean, sure, you'll get all-wheel drive. But, but Jeeps always have that true 4x4 capability that's unmatched. It's a little bit of an acceleration test, but... I'm gonna take it on the highway in a minute and truly show off the V6 engine and how it accelerates. All right, now we're about to test out the acceleration. I'm gonna wait till I get on the highway. V6 roar really nicely. I've always loved the sound of these V6s. I always thought they had such a great exhaust note. And this, this car is really good on the highway. The gas mileage is rated at 19 city, 27 highway with a complete 
combined rate of 22. But honestly, you know, it's not the best on gas. But it's just something to keep in mind, really. I, I know there are other SUVs in this range that have better gas mileage, such as the Honda CRV and the Subaru Forester. But this is a heavier car than those two. Not to mention, this is also a V6 with a 9-speed automatic. Well, those two are uh, four cylinders with CVTs. Although I believe you can also get the Forester in a turbo four. I would really recommend this car for long road trips. It's very comfortable to drive. The leather seats have good bolstering. And this car does come with heated seats, also a heated steering wheel because of the cold weather groove. And I think it's great for long road trips. I just, you have plenty of room. I mean, it, it only has 54 cubic feet of cargo space, 54.8, I believe. Which honestly, I, I found in all three Cherokees I've had is plenty, plenty cargo space for anything that you really need to put in the car. Thank you all for watching this tour and test drive on my 2020 Jeep Cherokee Limited. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot, especially if you're in the market for one of these as they're quite great cars. There will be more coming very soon.